everybody. Uh, hello again, everybody here in San Francisco. Hello again, everybody on ACIM Gather. Thank you for joining us. And now a hello to anyone who might be watching the YouTube video that will be prepared of this uh, talk, lovingly prepared for us by uh, Reverend Kelly Hallett, who lives up in the state of Washington in an island on Puget Sound. Hello, Reverend Kelly. Hey, Kelly. <laughs> Okay, so my, my title of my talk today is Pulling Down the Light. Pulling Down the Light. Um, as probably most of you know, if you've uh, heard me or listened to me, I am definitely in the camp of uh, interpretation of Course in Miracles that truly believes that we study this and our mind then affects the world that we perceive. So I'm in the mind affects world camp. Now, there are many people who study Course in Miracles and don't like to focus on that. They like to think of this as a mind-only experience, which I call the MoCamp, mind-only experience, that we just focus in on the mind and we let the world just be the world. Uh, but I see the world as a feedback mechanism, and I think that's what A Course in Miracles teaches us. So, of course, I'm working on my mind, uh, but I expect to see the world as a reflection of a mind, and just like a mirror that you use in the morning to groom yourself, the world is my mirror. So the world shows me what my thinking is. So to me, the world is important, and I believe my mind affects the image that's on the mirror. And miracles are, of course, ways of thinking and different ways of thinking, but I think we can, and I can, I do expect miracles frequently, most of the time, to show up. I expect my change in thinking to show up in the world. I once heard uh, Marianne Williamson, I believe, say this, and I also think I've heard Gabrielle Bernstein say this, which is, I don't believe in miracles, I depend on them. You know, I don't believe in miracles, I depend on them, and I mean that in the world as well. Uh, I just don't believe miracles are going to show up in my experience of life. I depend on the fact that they're going to show up in my experience of life. So I did a little search today uh, as I was you know, take, writing my notes, just wanted to make sure who said this, and I, I found out that a lot of people say this. This is actually attributed to all kinds of people. I didn't realize how common this little meme was. So I think we can all claim it. We can all claim it. I don't believe in miracles. I depend on them. So it isn't just a belief, it's, it's I rely on them showing up in my life. I re rely on the fact that things are going to shift and change in my experience of living that are going to reflect the fact that I have begun to embrace and realize that I'm an eternal, infinite being that is connected to infinite power. Okay. And... I have actually felt that there is a shift going on in the Course of Miracles community because I'm in touch with the larger Course of Miracles community through a number of things that I do. And I, I think more and more people now are getting comfortable, really getting comfortable with embracing this idea that miracles are going to show up in the appearances and in the manifestation of their life and that it's okay. It's just, it's, it's more than okay. It's good to expect them and see them and witness to them and, and be grateful for them. I think for a while a number of people in the Miracles community were a little afraid to do that because they would be criticized as being too focused in the world. And so, you know, they were always told, you know, you just gotta, you know, just let the world be and just keep focusing it on your mind. And while I understand that, I think that denies a large part of the Course of Miracles teaching, which is that the world is a reflection of our mind. So yes, of course, we can expect the world to give us a demonstration of the shifts in mind that we are having. So um, I think the groundwork has definitely been laid for us to truly be miracle workers. Miracle workers that do miracles that show up in the world that we appear to be in. Um, the, the title of the talk uh, comes from this idea that I've been working with, and it's all over the course, and it was definitely in the reading that Reverend Dusseldorf there read, was that it's beyond this uh, cloud bank of a world that we see, there is this realm of light. This realm of light. That realm of light is always there. It's always there, and we could actually reach up and, and, and grab it. 
you know, we can reach up and, and take it, or I, for the image that I've been working with is I reach up, I connect to it, and I just pull it down into my, into my being, into my life, into my body. I, I reach up and I pull down the light. And, uh, you know, I, I just think that's, that's working for me. That's terrific. And I don't really care if, if some people think that's not justified or anything. I, I work with it with whatever works for me. That's all I work because because the important thing is you find things that work for you, imagery that works for you, <clears throat> and you work it, and you bless it, and you play with it, and you embrace it, and you imbue it with the power to be powerful for you. So it doesn't really matter, but I got this new thing now, it's like I've been developing it for about a month. I can to reach up, connect to the light that's just beyond the cloud bank, and just pull it in. Pull it into my life, pull it into my body, and then share it out with, with the world. I mean, I think the light heals when it's in the flow. It's not about pulling it in and just hoarding it. It's about pulling it in and letting it broadcast it, because the light heals in the flow. In uh, the reading that Reverend Deuce Althea read, which was from uh, Work of Lessons 69, My Grievances Hide the Light of the World in Me, there are a couple of key passages that reflect this. And it said, think of your mind as a vast round area, like a vast round area, surrounded by a layer of heavy dark cloth. So our mind is this round area, okay, and it's, it's surrounded by these heavy dark clouds. And then it says, from where you stand, you can see no reason to believe there is brilliant light hidden by the clouds. See, so that's what I'm talking about. So from where we're looking and, you know, from our normal perception, the worldly perception, we don't see any justification for this truth that there is a brilliant reality of light that's being hidden by this cloud bank where these images are being projected. Yet, of course, in Miracles wants us to get that, that this eternal realm of light is just beyond the cloud bank. And that's why I believe I can just, like, reach up and grab it. it just push through the clouds. And then it says, therefore you do not attempt to go through them, they mean the clouds, and pass them, which is the only way that you would really believe, be, be really convinced of their lack of substance. We will make this attempt today. So this lesson is talking about that we make that attempt to do it. We don't just say, well, this cloud bank isn't real, so I can just ignore it. We have to deal with it. But we deal with it while we're remembering the truth. And that truth is that there is this round sphere of light and we can push through the cloud bank. That's why reaching up with my hand is, is, is this good imagery for me. So we can't just ignore the world and pretend it doesn't exist. We actually have to affirm the truth. The truth is that there is this reality of light that's accessible and then move towards it. Grab it, embrace it, command it, pull it down. And then it says, reach out and touch them in your mind. These are the, the clouds. Brush them aside with your hand. Brush the clouds aside with your hand. Feel them, the clouds, resting on your cheeks and your foreheads and your eyelids as you go past them. I mean, it's giving us some real graphic visualization imagery here to work with. It's not just saying, ignore the world, which is what a lot of people think A Course in Miracles is saying. I don't get that it says that. It's, it's, it wants you to engage with the world, but it wants you to engage with the world from this truth that there is this larger reality, this reality of light. And then it says, go on, clouds cannot stop you. Go on, clouds cannot stop you. This, this cloud bank cannot stop us. We can push through, we can reach up, we can grab the light, we can pull it in, we can send it out. And in that flow, we will be healed and we will be healing the entire world along with us. Now, one of the things that you, as people start embracing the idea that they're, they're truly healers and, and there's a healing message in A Course of Miracles, they want to be healers. One of the things I've noticed is they, they declare the healing but then they sort of apologize for it. Like they declare the healing, but then they give a disclaimer. Like, you could be healed, you are healed, if that's the greatest good for you. Maybe the greatest good for you isn't to be healed. Well, then you could be at peace with your 
reality, whatever it is, and you know, they give all these little caveats. You know, like they, they don't just declare the healing and let it stand. You know, they give a, they give a, a caveat as a warning, a proviso of specific stipulations, conditions, or limitations. In other words, you are healed unless you're going through something that you really need to go through and there's a lesson for you to be learned in it, and then you can be at peace while you learn this painful lesson, which is what I hear kind of said a lot. And I've always kind of puzzled that, and since the Course of Miracles came to us from Jesus, you know, you remember the, uh, we're supposed to know, I think, a little bit of who Jesus was in the Bible stories. I mean, Jesus never did that. The lame man came to him, he didn't say, pick up thy bed and walk, unless it's your karma to be lame, in which case you've got a lesson to learn being lame, then be at peace and embrace the lameness and learn that wonderful lesson. No, Jesus said, pick up thy bed and walk. He didn't, he didn't do all this kind of excuse and apology, and yet I hear, of course, in miracles, students do that. If it's for your greatest good, you will be healed. No, it's, it's everybody's greatest good to have a healed life and a healed body and good relationships and, and uh, financial abundance and, and good supply. I mean, that's, that's the healed life, and I think we all have the right to it. And we can declare that idea and share that idea with people without giving them a caveat afterwards. I think we're ready to do that. Just share healing with people. Just share verbally. You are healed. I see you healed and whole. And I know that it's getting ready to manifest right now. Amen. And don't add that if it's for your greatest good. Just let it go. Just, I, I, I don't get that Jesus ever did that. And I don't really see that he tells us to do that in A Course in Miracles. I mean, this is how he talks in A Course in Miracles. The light has come. You are healed and you can heal. The light has come. You are saved and you can save. You are at peace and you bring peace with you wherever you go. Darkness and turmoil and death have disappeared. The light has come. You know, that's how Jesus talks when Jesus is in his power, which is all the time. And that's how he wants us, I believe, to share this message, to share it powerfully, to access the light. Figure out what imagery works for you. I'm working with that reaching up my hand and pulling it down and pulling it in and sending it out because it just, that's, that's just working for me right now. Find out what works for you and work it. And, and do it. A Course in Miracles, uh, when Helen first started channeling uh, back in what was it, 65, 65, on that first day of channeling, the first thing that she wrote down on the, the steno pads would, was, you will see miracles through your hands through me. So this image of working with our hands and touching you know, that it was really right there at the very beginning of the messages that Helen heard. It was, it was later edited out, but that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> but it was the first thing that she heard, and it's, it's been put back in the new Robert Perry edition, which I'm really grateful for. So you will see miracles through your hands, through me. And let's not be afraid to use our hands in whatever way, you know, use our hands to push up through the clouds and grab the light, but also use our hands to heal, to touch. I mean, look how instinctive that is. You, you meet somebody, you extend your hand, and you, you shake a hand, you give a hug. That touching the hands, touching with the hands, it's, it's instinctual that that is a loving, good gesture and a gesture of, of healing. And I think we could definitely work with it. I think, of course, in miracles, mentions it all throughout. Here's what it says. From this day forth, your ministry takes on a genuine devotion, a glow that travels from your fingertips, a glow that travels from your fingertips to those you touch and blesses those you look upon. I mean, it wants us to visualize and to feel and to know that there's light energy coming from our hands, from our fingertips. And I don't think this is a metaphor. You know, some people say this is a metaphor. It's, you know, like, it's something to imagine. It's not, really, there's not really energy coming from our fingers. Yes, there is. Yes, there really is. And I, I've been on a personal campaign about this for a long time. Saying something is a metaphor that isn't a metaphor, it's using the word wrong. 
There are metaphors in A Course in Miracles. Ask not the sparrow how the eagle soars. Okay, nobody thinks I'm supposed to go up and start talking to sparrows. Like I see a sparrow, how, how does the eagle soar? Now, that's not what that, you know, we kind of, I mean, go ahead and try it if you want, it's okay, but, you know, when, when we read a line, ask not the sparrow how the eagle soars, okay, that's a metaphor. Jesus isn't saying, go talk to sparrows and ask them how their, their brothers, the eagle, soar. I mean, first of all, it wouldn't work, but, you know, if that's a metaphor, but when it says something like, this day forth, your ministry takes on a genuine devotion and a glow that travels from your fingertip to those you touch and blesses those you look upon. That's not a metaphor. It's just a statement. It's just a statement of fact. There's energy flowing from your hands. See it. Feel it. Heal with it. Touch people. Bless people. Let that energy flow. Some people think A Course in Miracles is very body negating. And it's not. Listen to this quote. Your body will be sanctified today. Its only purpose being now to bring the vision of what you experience this day to light the world. Our body is sanctified. Sanctified means to set apart as or declare holy, consecrate. So the body isn't a negative thing. We're supposed to see the body is holy, sanctified. When we're connected to our purpose and to the light and to the Holy Spirit, our body is blessed and holy and sanctified and healthy. And I think that is the message of A Course of Miracles. And I am so glad to see the community moving more and more in that direction. Uh, I think it, it took a long time. Uh, there was always an undercurrent of that, but there were, again, always the people kind of apologizing and giving the caveats all the time. And I'm just declaring that time in the Course of Miracles community as over. It is now time to, uh, you know, reach up and pull down the light and share that light and talk powerfully about healing the way that Jesus did, the way that Jesus does in A Course of Miracles, and I believe the way Jesus wants us to, the way Spirit wants us to, if, if Jesus isn't uh, an image that particularly works for you. Think of our thoughts as full of light. The thoughts that we share with people should be full of light. Stop believing in miracles. Start depending on them and share the fact that you have faith and depend on miracles with everybody that you meet and especially with everybody that seems to be challenged by appearances of their own. So get beyond belief. Know, know that that light is all around. Reach up, pull down the light, let it flow through you, share, talk powerfully, talk healing, stop apologizing, heal yourselves, heal the world, let that light flow through and let it flow through your hands. Thank you. That's my talk for today.